road. Peter? We've driven through an alternate time-space continuum, time warp, and fabric of reality. Wow. We're trapped in another universe. Right. Now, to get back, we must match the conditions of the fifth dimensional portal area thing. Do exactly as I say, and quickly. Push your nose up, look like a little piggy. Now stand up in your seat, flop your hands at the side of your head, make a little meeping noise. Yeah. Now dance like Debbie Boo, oh, and then... Oh, he admitted Pete, you made a wrong turn and we're lost. Yeah, but I found the hill. <laughs> with a building. Welcome to the Pearly Gates. St. Peter! Name? Uh, Tom. Tom Hatton. Tom Hatton the Butcher? Yes. Yeah. Well, according to the Celestial Registry, you've been a good man. You may enter the Kingdom of Heaven and live for eternity at God's side. I... Thank God! Enter and join your fellow Presbyterians. No, I'm Catholic. Oh, well then. Go to hell. <laughs> Next! But you just said I could go to heaven. Well, heaven is reserved for those who follow the one true path. Presbyterians? Presbyterians. What about everybody else who lived faithfully by the tenets of their religion? Tenets, and they blew it. Next! Now, wait a minute. I went to Mass. I went to Communion. I went to Confession. It's a waste of time. May as well stay at home Sunday morning and watch Red Fisher. He's a good Presbyterian. The Jews claimed they were God's chosen people. The Jews? That was years ago. God's fickle. Fickle? Well, it was the Jews for a few thousand years. Then it was the uh, Muslims, because he liked their hat. Oh. Then it was the Aztecs, and it was, uh, oh, who are they? The men, uh, the men wear little skirts and poke dead animals with sticks and have carrots in their hair. Methodist. Methodist. What about us Catholics? Oh, God, never like Catholic. Oh. No, no, he closely got to Catholics were Anglican. He thought they were a laugh and a half. Why? Can you imagine? Religion breaks off from the Catholic Church, takes all the worst parts. So anyone who isn't Presbyterian can go straight down to hell. Oh, no, no, no. Baptists go to purgatory. God likes Baptists. No, he just likes to get their hopes up. Then when they pick it, they're in. Ah! It's Friday, it's three, it's a riot. That's awful. That's God. So I've got to go to hell? Well, don't worry. You can always get legal counsel and appeal. There's lawyers in hell? Where else would they be? <laughs> <laughs> Which way is it? Out the way you came. First door on your right. Thanks. Next. Name? Murray Weinbaum. Murray uh, Religion. Presbyterian. Presbyterian. Enter the kingdom of heaven. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa. You don't know we're here because we're quiet as hell. You don't know we're creeping about. You don't know we're watching you making your lunch. You don't know we're here when you're out.
Duncan, Mike, Ted, and Jeffrey Boy, with Duncan Michaels, Mike Duncan, Ted, Jeff, and Jeff Oswald. I'm Duncan Michaels in Ottawa. And I'm Mike Duncan in Ottawa. And I'm Ted Jeff in Ottawa. And I'm Jeff Oswald. <laughs> Today we talk about street signs. Ted? Well, Jeff, I think street signs are everywhere, right, Jeff? Right, Ted, you think street signs are everywhere and you're wrong. Here's Mike to tell you why. Why? Why? Because street signs aren't on the mountaintops, right, Duncan? I don't have all the facts on that, right, Mike? Wrong, Duncan. Sorry to interrupt, Mike, but that's irrelevant, Duncan. May I interrupt here, Jeff? No, Mike Duncan, but Duncan <laughs> Michaels may. I think what Ted Jeff is saying is what Jeff Oswald means. Mike? Ted? Jeff? Yes, Ted? Street signs aren't everywhere. They're not on Duncan Michaels, right, Mike Duncan? I think we have to agree to disagree. I agree. I disagree. Don't you, Jeff? Yes, I don't not disagree, Mike. <laughs> well, I think that Ted is entitled to Ted's opinion, and Mike is entitled to Duncan's opinion, and Duncan Michaels is entitled to Jeff Oswald's disagreement with Ted Jeff. <laughs> I'm Michaels in Ottawa. And I'm Mike Duncan in Ottawa. And I'm Ted Jeff in Ottawa. And I'm Jeff Oswald. Good, Good night. night. Uh, Kazoo Video Well, hi there, paperclip, old buddy. Um, say, if you're not doing anything, would you, would you mind holding on to this picture of my wife for me? Oh, thanks a lot. Oh, and my wallet is kind of full. I hate to ask, but could you hang on to my driver's license, too? Oh, there's a pal. Oh, and this old envelope? Oh, thanks. And, well, as long as you're holding all that stuff, you, you wouldn't mind... My lease, too, would you? Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> oh, well, gotta run. Back next week. Thanks a million. <laughs> oh, Mr. Santa Moon. Ten more minutes, you'll look fabulous. <laughs> Two minutes, Cliff. Oh, lovely, Lisa. Lovely. <laughs> Article bill, the sailor. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dad. This is a stick-up. I want you to put all of your shampoo, cream rinse, and air conditioners in this bag. <laughs> those are our masculine beauty aids. Without those, our hair would be just a, a little less male. I won't let you play with our testosterone levels like this. <laughs> I will have the most male hair in the world. And ladies will look at me and maybe not vomit. <laughs> but now you are all witnesses. So I am forced to kill you. <laughs> oh, forget I gotta reload. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is awful. We're all gonna die, and my hair is still wet. This is a job for Mr. Canoe Head. Mr. Canoe Head. Once a mild-mannered insurance salesman. Who one day, while portaging his aluminum canoe in Algonquin Park, was suddenly hit by a giant bolt of lightning. You were hit by lightning! And had the canoe welded to his head. You're right. 
It's stuck to your head. And so began the story of Mr. Canoehead, Canada's greatest aluminum crime fighter, brother of Ted. <laughs> Our story continues. Call it woman's intuition. <laughs> My mother told me. Now stop, you cultural stereotype. Having masculine hair doesn't make you a real man. It's what's in your heart that really counts. Sure, you say that, Baldy. Look at that chrome dump. <laughs> Ouch, that hurt. Now give up, Mad Claude. You're not only under arrest, you smell. All right, you hold it right there till I'm reloading and blow your bow off. Taste the gunnels, you product of a broken marriage. <laughs> Dr. Perm, and I will defeat you later, canoe head. Once it's all ready. What have I done? I've created a powerful, evil, super mutant villain who will terrorize the free world for years to come. Well, at least your job is secure. That's true. <laughs> Next episode. I'm a man in a hood ornament, Mr. Canoe Head. You look. Now I'm gonna need these back by the night. Hi, I'm Dan Redican of The Frantics, the show you're watching. And I'd like to thank you because it's people like you sitting at home, living empty lives, watching this show, who've made it possible for me to earn the staggering sums of money I earn. And that's why I feel responsible to you for how I spend that money. So I'd like to show you some of the things I've bought with the money that your support has earned me. This. This is issue number 137 of the X-Men. It's a real collector's item. And thanks to you, I was able to afford the $135 that it cost me to buy it. And before that, all I could afford was the 75 cent original. <laughs> this, this musical instrument is amazing. It can, it can make any sound you want, duplicate any, I'm not exactly sure how it works. The salesman showed me, but I, I forget. <laughs> I think it needs batteries or something. <laughs> this, this note. $450,000 to buy it. I know, I know, I know. It's a week's salary. But I think it was worth it. It's the note from Paul McCartney asking John Lennon if he could join the Beatles. This pen, $1 million, the very first ballpoint pen ever made. The salesman, oh, oh, God, it's leaky. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this. My porcelain collection. I, uh... I guess I kind of lost interest in it. But at the same time, I became interested in my gun collection. So don't worry, folks. I am not squandering your money on real estate and stock portfolios. I'm investing it all in really neat junk. And I will continue to do so. Unless this show gets canceled. In which case, I'll have to go back on welfare. <laughs> and then you'd still be paying my salary. So thanks a lot, folks. with a newspaper box. Hello? Lovely pastry there. Tart Cyrano. A fine, brittle utter pastry. Cradles a finely whipped chocolate mousse. Oh. Thick almond cream. Mm. Topped with chocolate shavings and triple sec liqueur. I want one. A tart Cyrano? I want a tart Cyrano. Very well, monsieur. I will put it in a box for you. Smear it on my face. <laughs> Pardon? Smear it on my face, please. You are crazy? Mm, so soft, oh, the yes. texture? Yeah, the, no, it's not right. Okay, put it in a box. I'll, uh, take it home with me. You're going to smear this when you get home, aren't you? There's no law against this. I mean, food can just be eaten. 
these pastries, they deserve better. They deserve to be smeared all over me. All over there. I meant my face. I meant my face. Well, uh, there is no one in my store. D'accord. One tart Cyrano. Gush it into my face. Oh, I cannot bear too much. Oh. Oh. Oh, yes, I love it. Oh. More. What's that? It's like a balloonogram or a singing telegram, only I grunt it. Grunt it? Okay. Stop that. It's disgusting. I'm paid to do this. I love my job. I'm a workaholic. you up to this? It's a happy birthday wish from Michael. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, it's very, you know. <laughs> Keeps me going. <laughs> I know you don't know it. I know you can't see. I know you don't show it. But baby, you need me. <laughs> you live in a big penthouse. You drive an XKE. You're gorgeous, rich, and sick. Well, baby, you need me. You stepped from your limo. I tried to bum a dime. You said, get lost, rhino. I took that as a sign. You need me. Where foot 
Mr. Interesting, here's something I find very interesting. No two snowflakes are exactly alike, although there are a couple in Oregon that bear a startling resemblance to one another. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> 